It's tough on the UMass campus where they've won 37 straight. When the Wolverines visit Assembly Hall to take on the fight in Illini, and later, Alabama. It's number 21, Pennsylvania, number one, UMass at the Mullen Center. Penn has won eight in a row, UMass nine straight victories. Now the starting lineup for the red and blue of Pennsylvania. The tallest men in the lineup for Fran Dunphy are six feet seven. Eric Moore is a strong six seven. However, he says to his coach Dunphy, every team we play has the height advantage, but we feel our guys are strong. Really solid, tough performers going to have to compete big on the glass. And of course, John Calipari features Marcus Camby in the middle, the sophomore coming off three straight games of double figures in scoring, and he'll jump center against Sean Trice of Penn. Larry Lembo throws the ball in the air, and UMass control the tip. And goes, and a man, it closes the turnover. Kellogg threw it to the corner. He thought Camby would be there. Camby was heading toward the bucket, and already a turnover just seven seconds in. And already the press, as expected. This is a solid club. I don't think they'll cough it up too often. A senior from Haddonfield, New Jersey, is the point guard. This is Trice, and now Jerome Allen, the leading scorer for the Quakers. Moore, shut off by Rowe, threw it away. Each team has had it once, and each has turned it over once. Good ball movement, generally. They get good looks. They can take you on the dribble. Real solid offensive club. I bet you can be too, Sean. You don't get any easy shots around the rim with him. Lou Rowe takes it strong to the goal. That's what he has not been doing. That's what they want him to do. Sweet Lou. The TV's on. He'll step up. Dubbed the TV Lou Rowe by the man sitting to my right. He tends to play better when the bright lights are on. He sees red. A lot of pro guys here to take a look at him. More. Let's see how Camby stays on the ground. He's a great shot blocker. Watch it. He's unbelievable in there. Now, Eric Moore is going to have to do a little more cutting. All the ball fakes. He's going to have to make quick decisions inside. Now, this will go against guys his size, but Camby is relentless, understands how to block shots, generally keeps it in play. 134 career blocks for Marcus Camby, and he's only midway through his sophomore year. Trice. Long with it, can be the rebound. Still no score. We played rather 2 nothing UMass. We played nearly a minute and a half. Williams, short with it. Rebounded by Moore. And they got, they got numbers, and so they'll take advantage when it shows. Maloney lays it in. Solid. They finish when they get the opportunity. Deflected out of bounds by Allen. 2-2, the score 18-20 left in the first half. This is only the fourth meeting all time between these two schools. They split a pair of games in the early 70s. Then they played two years ago, March of 93, in the first round of the NCAA tournament at Syracuse. And UMass won a tight game, 54-50. Four-pointer, yep. You notice Jerome Allen with the push. He drags people on the break. Camby had it rattle out. Strong rebound by Trice. Many of the players who were in that game two years ago at the Carrier Dome are in the lineup for these teams tonight. Maloney, a good three-point shooter. That little pick and roll, they've been doing it since Episcopal. That's better. Moore, too strong with the layup. Dingle the rebound. 2-2 two -two the score. Now, Eric took him outside, and that's to his advantage. Rowe. Cut off by Trice. And Lou's got to get in tight. Or John's going to give me a little hook. <laughs> As he did for the first half of the game here Thursday night against Rutgers the first few moments of the second half Rowe was on the bench after a four point first half he rebounded with 13 points in the second half he's been spending too much time away from the bucket UMass has never lost in this building and on their campus they've won 37 in a row that's the second longest active on campus winning streak Indiana's won 50 in a row in Bloomington isn't this the first highly rated team they trap on the inbounds out of their zone Williams makes a three. That's the danger. 
The cross court passes. Nice look. Maloney fed more. He was probably conscious of the blocking ability of Camby. Too many fakes, and he lost the handle. You can't shake the guy. Pump, pump, the well is dry. Edgar Padilla has checked in. At guard, wing number 12, he's replaced Jared Kellogg from Massachusetts. Boy, did Calipari look like he needed a resuscitator on the mm. open. Didn't he tire? Camby, strong to the goal. Rowe. Penn Bench thought that Camby traveled before he dished off to Rowe. The foul was on Moore, his first and the second against the Quakers. Well, you know it was going to be power for UMass. If they play on the glass, it's certainly to their advantage. But how about this strong move and then the dish? And this is where Lou Rowe has some magic. The AC kid. And he's an improved free throw shooter this year as well. 79% this season as compared to 67% last year. How about that crossover dribble? Maloney for three. Air ball, he thought he was hit. I think they got a little piece of it, though. Mm -hmm. They come running at you. That's why they're number one in, in many eyes. The defense is overlooked. This club works at it. Exchanging there. The sw they're switching out top. You can see Allen ends up with Kellogg. Down to 12 on the shot clock now. UMass leads 8 to 2. Can't gamble. Deflected out of bounds. UMass will inbound with 7 on the shot clock. Dante Bright checks in for Massachusetts, replacing Dana Dingle. Sean, you don't want to lead Rowe to the basket. You can't gamble. Uh, he is pushing this club because of the rest. He thinks that they can get by this. Look at the alley-oop and nobody on it. Marcus Camby. Well, Grant Dumphrey knows he's got the timeout with the TV. He's tempted to call it, though. His team is down by eight. There will be a TV timeout on the next whistle. 10-2, Massachusetts. Get a good one. Use a little bit of clock. Get yourselves organized. Composure is essential. And a good look here for Kegler. And Scott Kegler drives it in. He's coming off a career-high 26 points last Saturday night against Dartmouth, the game in which he went 7 of 9 from the three-point line. And as John Calipari mentioned, Penn hasn't played since that game last Saturday in hand over to him. Wright missed his first shot. Camby knocked it out of bounds. So Penn will inbound when we come back. 10-5 UMass at our first timeout. I haven't been really playing well, and uh, I noticed the team hasn't um, have that, that spark, you know, that they needed to uh, to get going. And I think, you know, every time I've gone, this team feeds off of me. And I, I think I, I feel a responsible, responsibility to, to get myself going so the rest of the team can just follow. Lou Rowe got off to a tremendous start this season in the tip-off classic 34 against Arkansas. Followed it up with 33 in the next game against Kansas, but he's had only one game of more than 17 points since. But UMass has been winning without that type of production from Rowe. Well, they've had some close calls of late, including Tuesday night on Nolian, New York, when they went to overtime to beat St. Bonaventure. Good pressure on the shooters. Air ball thrown up by Trice, saved by Kegler, and Moore scores. He will compete. He won't back off. Of course, without the Camby in there, there's a little more room to operate. A little two-three zone match. Try and force the outside shot. They've got to acknowledge who the shooter happens to be and tag him. This might help them rebound a little bit more. Look at that little hide on the short corner. That is beautiful. And Dante Bright hits from in close along the baseline. Enos Norville has checked in for Marcus Camby, wearing number 50. Penn still has not substituted. The Quakers don't have a great deal of depth. They're a seven-man team. And not big up front depth. Right here, they might as well use Eric Moore right now. I think Rowe can't guard him, but you don't have to fear the shot block as much. Trice travel. You know why you like watching Penn? You feel you could play for them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just do as Fran Dunphy tells you, and you could be a functional performer. How about that record? Over the last two seasons plus this one, 
55 and 9. Best winning percentage in Division One. Nice to see a LaSalle guy that can coach. <laughs> Meaning that you could not as a LaSalle grad? Not like him. Uh, he played for Tony Abbott, my old backcourt partner. That's where he learned everything. Padilla got no rim, but Dingle found the bottom of the net. And UMass has pushed the lead back to 14 to 7. They led by 8 at 10 to 2 moments ago. Now Penn out rebounds its opponent by one. They've got to do a much better job on the glass. UMass out rebounds its opponents by seven a game. They are making sure on the perimeter. Coaches challenge the defenders. Don't let them light it up. It could help more. Allen with time running out of the shot Ooh. clock. Strong to the basket. Now that's what's impressive. He can take his guy. Number one draft pick. Acknowledged by many. How high is the question? The one reported weakness in his game is shooting. Mike Williams missed the three, but there's Rowe to put it back. Two follows in a row. With the zone, the guards are going to have to come down and rebound, and Allen can help in that area, and they can still run out. Maloney, awkward three, way off, but fielded by Moore. See how they stretch to the go to the goal. Wide open, Kegler swatted by Williams. UMass came into the game with 89 block shots this season in 11 games. They're nearly on a pace to set the NCAA record, set in 89 by Georgetown. That team averaged 9.1 blocks per game. With this team around eight. It's incredible. They had 20 blocks in a game earlier this year against West Virginia, the Atlantic 10 record. Padilla. Williams for three. So many weapons. Take away one. They're very unselfish as well. Kalapati Kalamali, I think he's got him wired. And the Minutemen have their largest lead at 10 points as we tick down to 12 minutes remaining in the half. And Allen, unlucky as the three, rattled out into the hands of Williams. And you notice only one guy on the glass, that's Moore. Back to man-to-man. -man. Williams down the lane. Eight what? points for Mike Williams. Allen nearly lost it in traffic. Moore. Peace, peace again. Rowe and Bright were both in the vicinity. And the Quakers look rattled. That was Moore taking a shot from the foul line with not a single teammate underneath. You'd be, you'd be shaking your head, too, every time you shot at somebody who's in your face. They do not permit an easy one. Padilla! And this time, Coach Dunphy can't wait for the TV timeout. They're on their feet at the Mullins Center. The number one Minutemen looking very much like the best team in the country at the moment. What people are saying about the new Tiger Shark watercraft. The brand clinically proven to loosen and break up black before you brush. So you staying at home too well. well the sight of a highly ranked opponent has put some life back in the step of the UMass Minutemen. Penn at number 21, the highest ranked non-conference opponent ever to come into the Mullen Center to play the Minutemen. And we're getting a little bit of a blow, much needed. Trice. And nobody on the glass. Trice didn't get the bounce as he was guarded tightly by Tyrone Weeks, the native of Philadelphia, who's played very well in recent weeks. Terrific rebounder, and that's how deep this team is. They go 10 if they need be, if they need to. Nearly midway through the first half, and Penn has only scored nine points. It's 24 to 9, UMass. Good defense in there, back to the man to man. Weeks does take up a lot of room, huh? Five on the shot clock. Kellogg into Camby. Good help. And Camby hit the deck. It's controlled by Trice. Shot clock went off, but they continue to play. The play by Bowman. Ira Bowman just off the bench laid it in. They need some cheapies. Matt Maloney with a great look and lead and the sneak out. This is the end. They got to tee it up and help on the glass, though. Bowman and Tim Krug, a junior, wearing number 23, into the game for Penn off the bench. Weeks, short with it. And 
controlled by Allen. Three on two across midcourt. Randy, look at him stopping out charging. Maloney missed a three. He's been cold early on. That's the first real good look he's had. Now he can take him with the dribble. And uh, Freddy Krug. Nice touch. Yeah, Matt Maloney known for scoring, but watching different games, he gets into the middle. He's a great interior passer. Gives it up. It's a very unselfish team. Keep by this talented backcourt. And the lead for UMass down to 11 and a steal by Maloney. Then he was fouled. That's the first foul called against UMass. It took them 10 minutes and 41 seconds to be called for a foul. Can be the first Minutemen to pick up a foul. Are you inferring to some sort of a home court influence? No, because with Penn's that only been called for two. It's been a very cleanly played game. Well, nobody, I, I have a note here how good or an offensive rebounding team Penn is. And it doesn't seem that they're getting more than the center on the glass. Now, obviously, they're afraid about the balance getting back, protecting against the fast break. Kegler open for three. Camby said that rebound is mine. Williams for three. Rowe. He's, a, he's a unbelievable. Everybody calls him a warrior. He just attacks the glass. Nine points by doing exactly what the coaches want him to do. Get back on the block, close to the basket. They run that little pick and roll, and Moore slides beautifully to the goal. He just can't get an easy one. Give it to him in the corner. Williams a steal after the fourth UMass block of the game. Williams! Well, all the things you're taught, pump fake, you'll get the guy up, he'll be an Air Force man. Not with these inside people, they counter Camby with Rowe. And this matches the largest lead of the night for UMass. 15 points at 28, 13, 8, 11 left in the first half. A little bit of a blitzkrieg, and they got to get their head back in it now. Moore, nice pass, but it's knocked away by Padilla, the pass intended for Krug. When Camby's in there, you're all you're delighted when your teammate gets free, because then you don't have the problem of Camby. Harassing. Jerome Allen back in. Matt Maloney gets a rest. Now this ball game, and they played a great schedule. Uh, Pat, certainly going to help them in March. Golden missed the shot. Padilla, that's a two-pointer off the mark. And Bowman looks to push. He's in his first year at Penn as a transfer from Providence College. He played two seasons. Seton Hall prep kid. Bowman, nice shot. And all of these guys have been watching a great backcourt. They're going to be pretty good next year mm. out there. And Moxley will be back. And of course, Bowman. And on the dribble, the little small change. Nickel Dimer Larry. <laughs> Called against Ira Bowman, his first and the third against the Quakers. Timeout in Amherst. The home standing Minutemen up by 13. Jerry's music has gotten bigger. And just south of Amherst on I-91 on UConn's campus, Providence continuing to give the nation's only unbeaten a tough ball game, a one-point Husky lead, 12 minutes to play. We'll keep you posted. Well, it was a... Daddy. Connecticut had a real scare from Pitt the other night, mm -hmm. and now it's the Providence Friars giving a run. Conference play in New England get-together. And uh, John Calipari extremely excited, not only about his team, but the academic nature. Six or seven are on the AD's Dean's list. Yes, they had uh, six players in this most recent semester, the fall semester, with a grade point average of 3.0 or better. Tyrone Weeks reportedly had a 3.5. Marcus Camby has acknowledged mm -hmm. that he had a 3.2. They have not released the specific grades of all the players because that is a privacy matter, despite a uh, tactic used by the Boston Globe to reveal grades earlier in the year. Another small change. McCrory's is open. Oh, the, the point of emphasis is on that call. Mm-hmm. And when you're playing a guy like Jerome Allen, 
that is some disadvantage. I had a lot of players on the AD's list. <laughs> what list was uh, that? Unfortunately, it wasn't uh, a positive one. UMass with the ball, up by 13. The last foul was on Kegler. Dingle, fouled by Kegler again. See, you can't relax at all. And that time, Kegler relaxed to dip in. Norville, who's getting solid minutes, contributing. Not a bad look by the big fella. Ten minutes a game. Hargrave military. Terry Blaney, the assistant coach. George's son down there. And Michael Burns, who played here for John, sending a couple of performers. Andre Burks came out of that school as well. He's out for the year. As a freshman guard with an injured knee, he'll have surgery to repair a torn ligament in his knee next week. And that's a loss because Burks was really starting to help out in the backcourt. Great foot speed. And as Larry Limbo takes over to three seconds, you can just see the cut and Kegler delinquent, not positioned, not anticipating, and not up the lane. He's got to lead the guy to that duck in. 30 to 15, Massachusetts. The free throw wiped out by a lane violation. Use a little clock. Home and a runner taken down by Norville. That was going to come down well short of the bucket. This is Carmelo Travieso just in. Row. He gets that stroke going. He is devastated. Early in the year, he was knocking that down. And Travieso, the block from behind. Three people around them, though. And five blocks for the minute men already. Row. Strong to the glass. Lost the handle. Row missed again. And finally, Moore rips it down for Penn. 32-15, Massachusetts. And, and Allen fouled on the drive. I'll tell you, I think John reached Blue Row. Mm -hmm. Going back to your hometown, I know you have that problem, same as I do. You get booed when you went to your hometown. <laughs> they were all over. Everybody wanted to see Lou. Great feature today on ESPN about him, and he just struggled. You're talking about, for the folks who don't know, a game that UMass played last Saturday at Atlantic City, Lou Rose hometown against LaSalle. He really struggled in that game. But even Lou knew without Coach Calipari telling him that he wasn't playing well, that perhaps he was trying to show the NBA scouts he had that outside jump shot and the ball handling skills. And you made the point to Lou, as did Coach Calipari, if you want to make the most positive impression, just go back to do what you're doing well. You were pretty impressive in that first game when you scored 34 against Corliss Williamson in Arkansas. Inside. Play hard. That's right. And, and that's where he is best. And, and he does have that little outside game. But just show NBA guys. And the more you talk to them, this year in particular, they want guys who go out and perform with effort. And so I think this draft is going to shape up where they're taking guys they like. Mm -hmm. uh, up top, Grant, that you may go for the real talented kid and overlook some things, but as you get into 10, 11, and 12, you want solid guys who are going to give it all. Matt Maloney made two free throws. That's no surprise. He's one of the best in the nation. Moore goes out of the game. Trice is back in for Penn. Penn could use a run between now and the half. 6-10 remaining. Pennsylvania down by 15. They played Michigan, and defensively, I don't think Michigan was at the point that they can get after you like this UMass team has. Plus the schedule they could be that you mentioned Arkansas, Kansas, and they, they've been out teed up with anybody who wants to play them. UMass played Maryland and Baltimore. They won at St. Louis before nearly 22,000 in the Keel Center. Camby drops it in. Not bad, huh? He's got foot speed of a little guy. Likes to play, too. Nice pump fake. First mistake he's made. Oh, I love it. Don't wipe it out. Oh, that's a bad call. Larry. Strong to the goal. There was very little contact, and the whistle was blowing before the contact was even made, what little there was. Everybody in Philly should be up. Two ladies uh, left. That's a terrible call. To the goal. Strong. Bright is falling down as Krug is still in the air. And they needed, oh, that's awful. They needed some lift, too, Sean. Some juice that could have provided some energy. Six fouls now against Penn. You don't have to reward UMass for good defense. I mean, no, they, and that they, wasn't good defense. Trip, and that wasn't it. That was the old Matador. High side defense. You see Crook down there looking to sniff and help out on Bright. Hamby lost the handle but got it back. He can put it on the floor. And a bit too much on the pass. Rowe went to save it. was bumped by Trice. Rowe head first into the scores table. 
I'm just looking down at Jerry Krause and Dave Twardzik. Twardzik with Charlotte and Jerry Krause with Scottie Pippen, I mean with Chicago Bulls. Mm -hmm. Their eyes lit up. You've got a guy that gets after it like that with that kind of talent. That is the Lou Rowe I knew in high school and fell in love with performance-wise. Well, the word John Calipari uses most often to describe Rowe is he's a warrior, and uh, for the most part, throughout his career, that's what he has been. <laughs> nice shot by Sean Trice, the senior from Detroit, who was honorable mention all Ivy League last year. And can be awfully close to getting that one. UMass by 15, Bright. Oh. was unbelievable. Forget Cam, wipe out the excitement on Camby's goal for that move, the sleight of hand in traffic. He breaks down defenses. This is the follow by Camby. Allen was sensational at the other end. With my warmest regards, Marcus. Allen's at the line for two. With 4.20 left in the half, Mass leading by 17. And Jerome got the charitable bounce. He's a 74% free throw shooter. Now look at this. Now this would, you would lose some clothing. The lingerie would be lingering between two and challenging the 10. He is a great looking player. Two time, one of the Carroll. Ah! The hair is unkempt on occasion having to play this guy. Trice missed the tip. I think what's impressive about the fact that he has been the Ivy League player of the year the last two years is he hasn't averaged more than 15 points per game in a season. That tells you that the coaches in that league have so much respect for his total game. He's a complete player. He plays within himself. He has done a great job with them. And Lou to the rack. TV Lou doing it again tonight. 13 points. For the national audience. He doesn't need a director or a producer either, does he? <laughs> Krug went after his own shot. Rowe came down with it. UMass with its largest lead at 18 and the ball 345 left in the first half. So they make you do some things you're not used to doing. You'll force a little bit, you get anxious. And they got support inside. So once you get by, there's some damage ahead. Rowe feels it, has it. here in the first half still 320 remaining they give him a little clear side allen wide open nice job you know what they've done they've limited the help just there two-man basketball extraordinary use of the bounce by jerome allen and a nice give back by trice it was trice is nice <laughs> and allen has five points he's the lone captain of the penn squad this season and the reach in called against bowman and that puts penn over the limit the second foul on Ira Bowman. Well, UMass is very active without the ball. They're a power team. They go up and down. They're unselfish. And they got the ability to rag you in the backcourt. Eric Moore back in for Penn. Coming up, the Delta Fawcett halftime report. This is Upset Saturday. Chris will have the details of Danny Hurley's revenge, and he'll update you on how Connecticut is bringing it home against Providence tonight. So much talk, and these two programs are not very far apart geographically, about a matchup between UMass and UConn. John Calipari says we'll play them anytime, anywhere, but they still can't get together on a game. Well, it's one of those things I'm sure Jimmy Calhoun, if you asked him, He'd probably say, oh, I'd love to do it, but down deep, I think he feels he's got enough problems. 20-point <laughs> lead for the number one team. Derek Kellogg's been out for like an hour. He's just coming in. That's how deep they are, Chris. Loaded. Here's a look at the game summary. Penn's struggling because of all the contesting of shots. Well, Coach Dunphy said even though our tallest starters are 6'7", we're undersized just about every time we play somebody. He wasn't particularly...
deeply concerned about that tonight because he thought that with the bodies on Moore and Krug and Trice, they could match Camby and Rowe in the strength area, but that hasn't seemed to be the case to this point tonight. Pretty dish. Moore powering in that time and fouled from behind by Dante Bright. Now, they just ran America's play, which is a little screen-the-screener. Allen comes up to the top of the key. He's so good at patiently delivering a pass. Looks for himself and then creates for others. And Fran is a guy that, until he talks about this team, deflects all the praise to oh. That impressed you the most it about It really impressed me talking to Fran Dunphy today about, you talked about the success of his team this year. And he immediately said something nice about his players, how hard they work, they're a good team. Then you complimented him on the offense and defense that they run, how well coached they look to be. He said, well, that's Fran O'Hanlon, my assistant. He handles all that stuff. And it wasn't false modesty. No. He said it in a way that you knew he was sincere about it. And it's so refreshing in this day and age to see somebody with that demeanor. Genuine humility. Right, forcing a little bit. Nice stop by Trice. Humility from a guy who's, as we chronicled earlier, has the best record in Division One the last two and a half seasons. A little later in the year, we've got the Penn Princeton game, by the way, which I'm looking forward to. The Titans of the league, a little bit of a force there. And oh, my. The goal. I think they called that a he, goal 10. I think what he did is got the net. Didn't they say that, he yeah. must have grabbed the net because that ball uh, hit the side of the rim and was coming back. Right in there, just grazed it. If anything, cut the fingernails. Oh, boy. And he gets a little seat on the bench for that, huh? Get his doorbell. Don't make a mistake. Because we have plenty of other people who can play, says John Calipari. There you go. He was due to come out. It's Kellogg, Dingle, Bright, Williams, and Rowe. Smaller lineup on the floor now for Massachusetts with both Camby and Norville on the bench. And a 1-3-1, too. They're not as fearful of the lob, although obviously Lou Rowe and Bright can do it. So they still pull into the switch here by Fran. Kellogg drills a three with under 10 on the shot clock. Oh, he's not your standard brand either of Kellogg. <laughs> I mean, th that guy does know how to win. That's what Fran Duffy said about it. I love Kellogg. And we're talking about the UMass personnel today. There Maloney you go, drives it in. Jimmy Maloney would rather talk about Matt, and I don't blame him, than Temple. Uh -huh. Don't let Cheney know that. Jim John Maloney Lee. is Matt's dad and the assistant coach at Temple under John Cheney for a long time with Coach Cheney. Head coach at Niagara had Calvin. Calvin Murphy, that is. Yeah, they can take you with the bounce, too. It's not just their sets that destroy you. They cause the pinch to run selfish. If you don't help, they can go to the goal strong. Of course, Matt Maloney might have some interesting insights into the rivalry between UMass and Temple, the much ballyhooed incident last year here between Coach Cheney and Coach Calipari when Coach Cheney stormed into Calipari's press conference and disrupted it with uh, a few, some animated discussion. A few suggestions. Now, they had a roast in Jersey of John Calipari. I happened to be involved. Yes, you were. And I introduced John Cheney as one of the roasters. And he was very he, funny. He had tape over his mouth <laughs> and handcuffs on. Well, he was uh, very embarrassed by what happened here last uh, year. Oh, but what a, what a classy thing to do. Yep. And for a great cause. It was for charity. Yeah, for diabe you know, right, diabetes. Under a minute left in the first half. UMass has controlled throughout. They went up 10-2 to two right out of the gate, and they haven't looked back. Allen, a long three with still 15 seconds on the shot clock. The shot clock is off now. Massachusetts can take the last attempt of the half, and the fans here in Amherst appreciate the play of the Minutemen. Solid, huh? And defensively awesome. I mean, you rattle a sound team like Penn into rush shots, mistakes, not running their sets. Uh, you've done a heck of a job. Penn team averages 85 points per game. They have only 28 and a half. Right. Rejected. Rowe back up strong, and Crew couldn't reject that one. Should have been an offensive foul. I mean, I, you want to teach your guy to challenge the goal. Lou Rowe with a beautiful spin out, but great support. Look at Krug. Now watch this. There's the good block, and you're right. Rowe really jumps yeah, back into the pile here. Right there. Jeez. 40 
27-28. Give him a shake. <laughs> 16 now for Rowe. We played on the Goodwill Games team in Russia this past summer with Jerome Allen. Mm -hmm. George Ravelin, the coach, and hopefully George is feeling great, enjoying his time off. Krug at the buzzer. A double pumper. Yeah, wow. and it almost went in from half court. Great half for the top-ranked team in the country, and most importantly for John Calipari, his message got through to Lou Rowe. Very solid play by Lou, and obviously good, strong people inside the power game. Very effective. 17.7 rebounds and a half for Rowe. Here's Chris Fowler. Sean and Raph, thank you. wonder if the Penn bandwagon is shrinking. This is a team that beat St. John's, Michigan, and Ohio State, but the Minutemen in a much different league than those three teams. I thought Calipari said his team was supposed to be tired. And they lead by 21 as Penn inbounds to begin the second half. You miss straight up man to man, and the big thing is run your stuff and get back at this thing in a patient fashion. Screen down for Allen. Eric Moore. Allen stepped out for three and missed it. Kegler. Allen to the baseline. Trice. Camby might have got a piece of that. Moore was fouled by Camby. And that's three fouls on Marcus Camby. Well, Penn could use more of Eric. With getting physical, get in position, and they're taking it to him a little and finding some people. Connecticut still undefeated. With the win over Providence tonight. How about Danny Hurley? What a great day for him, huh? Mm. Bouncing back after being out for the year. Uh, tough little look. And I think George Blaney has done a terrific job at Seton Hall in his first year. He inherited a team that many picked to finish at the bottom of the Big East, and uh, he's hanging in there night after night. Great. <laughs> terrific. I wonder mm. if he's using the plays I left for PJ. Maybe he <laughs> You never know. Some old files. I used Regan's. Reaching that into my former AD. And so you're Hall. saying your plays were bound to work sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get the right guys, even my plays might work. And there's the post up and the reach over. And the foul is on Trice. And that's three on Trice. So Camby quickly picked up his third in the first minute of the half. And Trice has done the same for Penn. Still 49 28 where they were at halftime. I saw Steve Bielski before the game and at halftime, and he was raving about this basketball team. And this is a tough night because he got UMass wanting to get back where they were earlier. Steve Bielski, the athletic director at Penn. Williams missed a three, and the Quakers push. You know, if you're a Penn fan, you know that your team shoots the three very well, so they could scrap back into it, but they might have to go long ball. They do with Maloney, and he missed it. Well, you're right on top of things. The problem is they're attacked by UMass, maybe unlike other teams they play. They get out on them. Penn 41% from three-point range for the season entering tonight. Straight up man to man. And a little down screen for Nickel and a post up for Rowe. 19 for Lou Rowe, the senior from Atlantic City, third team All American last year. He's the first ever All American at UMass, and that's astounding when you think that Dr. J played here. That's right. They didn't know who the doctor was then. He wasn't making house calls. You know, Lou can row this boat a long way if he plays like this. Fran Dunphy, the Penn coach, says he thinks UMass is a Final Four caliber team. And oh, I don't think he's seen anything tonight that would change his opinion. No, well, coming in, you felt the same way. I, I just couldn't look at this little penetration. The lefty release gets the two. It's not going to be easy. Goaltending called against Rowe. Credit the basket to Jerome Allen, and he has nine. They have a slogan here, refuse to lose. They refuse to let you get it up on the glass. Mm. Rowe had 17.7 rebounds in the first half. Mike Williams, the only other player in the game in double figures and scoring with 10. And this is Williams working on Allen. Pretty play, and he did work on Allen. Nice job with the left. Largest lead for Massachusetts. I just see what Allen did there. They get the little nickel dimer out top. But you see what he did? A lot of guys would have come down and tried to counter because the guy made a good move on you. He pushed, looked, and then got right into the offense. Real sound. Now, here's the little hesitation that lets him curl for the kiss at the end. Foul was on Dante Bright, his second. Now 
Al Trice. And Canby might have altered the shot as he came flying up. He may lead the country in hurries or changes. Rowe. Ah. Score it. Would have counted had it not gone in. Goaltending would have been the call. Different frame of mind, huh? You just see his enthusiasm tonight up a notch or two. And they look weary all week. Sixth game in 12 days. John Calipari said he was looking forward to tomorrow when he'd give his team the entire day off. But they haven't played like they're tired tonight. Kegler missed a three. Rowe got a hand on it. Then it was deflected by Krug to Bright. You know, look at the alley you Nice little play. Matt tried to get the legs out. That's what you've got to do to back the guy. It's a basketball play. But how about John Calipari? Never given up. Number one said the last time they had it, they didn't handle it right. So he started making phone calls. He said, we're not used to being the number one team. So he called Roy, Roy Williams, Williams, among right. others, said, now, how should I deal with my team about this? What should we do in practice? How can we get ready to play teams that are inspired to play us every night because we are number one? He called several coaches. Disappointed I didn't get a call. When was your team number one? <laughs> I was out of the country that week. <laughs> we weren't number one in South Orange. The prep had a good team. Allen had trouble on the dribble and gave it to Maloney. Maloney was the point guard on the NIT traveling all-star team this summer. And as he dribbled, an offensive foul away from the ball called against Jerome Allen. His first. The top two teams in women's basketball are on ESPN Monday. A great holiday matchup. Number one, Tennessee. Number two, Connecticut. That's Monday at 1 Eastern. Had a chance to see that Tennessee women's team play in person. They are terrific. Connecticut features a young woman named Rebecca Lobo. One of the Big best name in, in the, the state. Yeah. And they sell out. Nice loop pass to the box, huh? And Bright had it rattle out. And they push it up to Allen. Nice, nice play. That's a big time play. But Krug couldn't finish. Bright leads the charge in the other direction. 55-30 UMass. 15-40 remaining. Padilla for three. These guys will compete. Bright was fouled on the follow. And again, after the glass, Penn's got to hang tough. I mean, poise is essential. You're playing to understand the level. I mean, they've played teams. I mean, this is a given game for them. It's a relaxing game in many ways because they've proven their point to themselves, most importantly, and their coaches. It's an NCAA format for them. Mm -hmm. A power team. How do you handle it? First John Calipari at lunch today was already talking about seedings in the tournament and mm -hmm. the effect of this kind of a game. If you win it, it helps. If you lose it, it could really hurt your seeding. And the environment here, not an easy mm -hmm. one to come into. No. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Missed them both. Dingle hits the floor and was on the end line. Timeout. 55-30 Massachusetts. 15 and a half remaining in Amherst. At my school, you can't make mistakes. Great poised to it at this point and great challenges already during the course of the season so I think they're ready to make this run to the final four to be honest with you and they they can shoot from the outside uh, and they can score inside so that's a tough balance to deal with and he was hoping that run to the final four wouldn't start against his team tonight but uh, the Quakers are getting steamrolled and obviously Penn is a better team than they played tonight regardless of how well Massachusetts has played. It doesn't really look like the Quakers have been on their game, and UMass can take you out of it. Well, there's no lessening of talent when you go to the bench. And Penn, they have to tee it up with the same people consistently as Bowman, a value sub. One of the few guys that's able to come in and be positive, and yet they're not big in a positive way either. Right. 
but so impressed with the naturalness, the at ease of Fran Dunphy with himself, with his team, with his program, with the philosophy of the Ivy League. Very impressive. Fran Dunphy, like John Calipari, a tremendous turnaround job. Penn had only one winning season in six before he became the head coach. And as we mentioned, last two and a half years, the best record in all of Division I, owned by the Penn Quakers, who trailed by 25. They won 31 in a row in the Ivy League as Penn. And that's a record. They broke their own record set back in the late 60s and early 70s under Dick Harder. That's when Bilski was there. Bilski and Wall with a backcourt. He said Dick Harder told him, you guys, look, you're going to have to shoot most of the time. Steve Bilski said that was hard to take. 57-30 <laughs> UMass. Allen's line drive shot saved by Rowe to Padilla. The balance. Right. Oh, and he makes something out of nothing because of talent and passing selection. Timeout, Quakers. Penn has scored only two points here in the second half. Bob and Judith Akers look forward to the day they... Bowman trying to come up with the steal, but Dante Bright, very good in the open floor. Just come off a little curl in the post earlier. Solid performers. And they've been looking for Bright to step back up, like Lou Rowe. Bright was strong early in the season, has tailed off a little bit lately, particularly on the defensive end. He's played better tonight. Oh, Cam Man on the block. Well, I used to call Marvin the human eraser. Three blocks for Camby. He's like one of those number two pencils, huh? Six for the Minutemen tonight. Indeed, he is the eraser underneath the basket. Had over 100 blocks as a freshman last year. Only five freshmen have done that in the history of college basketball. And, you know, they were trying to establish him. you got to pay him. Got to feed the big guy. He's swatting away at the other end. There's a the little high-low look. They passed him up. Rigoberto Nunez has come in for the Minutemen, wearing number 44 with three on the clock. Williams! Nunez got a hand on it. It hit the floor and wound up with Maloney. Only two points for Penn this half. We've played nearly six and a half minutes. They can step it up a notch. Bowman deflected by Weeks. Out of bounds off Weeks. Penn will inbound with 23 on the shot clock. One for 11 this half are the Quakers from the floor. I'm sure if you're Penn, you're thinking they've got more than five guys. How about this? Contributing to some of the demise of Penn on the offensive end. Pretty in the fun. Krug, and that time Camby couldn't swat it. Remember, we mentioned five freshmen in history with 100 block shots or more. Sean Bradley, Shaquille O'Neal, Alonzo Mourning, and Tim Duncan of Wake Forest last year. The others, what company that is. It sure is. They get the support here. A pretty good goal, though. Coach Calipari says Camby is the best listener I've ever coached. You'd like to work with him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> is it something I said? Bowman. Strong. Did a goal. Nice looking player. Very heavily recruited in high school. Lyra Bowman ended up in Providence and opted for the Ivy. Doing very well in school, he told me. He's a strategic business. management major in the Wharton School, one of the great business schools in America at Penn. Well, when you play Massachusetts, you learn about a lot about strategic management. This is a very talent-laden basketball team. Nice play. Maloney to Bowman, who slipped and then fell on the end line. That's what's happening now. A little breakdown here and there. And you get shattered in your confidence area. And a nice run, very catchable pass. And Ira Bowman, who generally would knock that one down, had a little trouble with it. Weeks, Williams, and Nunez to the bench for the Minutemen. Penn, a great basketball tradition. This is the 95th year of Quaker basketball. They've won 16 Ivy League titles, 100, rather 1,395 wins, only 790 losses all time, 64% winning percentage in their history. The Big Five used to play all their games there. Nice penetration and dish. Now, talking about the Big Five, and we'll get back to that in a moment, uh, you know, here in Massachusetts, we're accustomed to politics and some strange things with ballots, and 
there's the voting on going to the all-time Big Five team, and I've seen some tampering with the ballot that we'll talk about. Well, we got to check that out. Huh? Yeah. I had the ballot the here. The Big Five was some form of competition. You have never been in a building more electrifying than the Plester. The home floor of the of you, Quakers you, you and you Big Five pick. basketball. And they had double headers. It was date night for most guys. Had a little difficulty in that area myself. <laughs> But that was the thing to do on a Saturday. Canby dropped it in 64-34 with 12 minutes left. Look at that reaction by Kellogg. Whoa. Pretty. Bowman at the floor to take it away. Crew get it altered by Canby. Canby blocks. Bowman blocks again this time a foul. He is something. But I love Penn's heart, though. Keeping after it. And that's what you want. Your dignity intact. This is a sensational looking prospect. I mean, what names come to your mind? You can't say Russell, he doesn't have that kind of game, but a Larry Nance, maybe. You're never getting a good look. Camby takes a seat with four fouls. Now, is this uh, the poster, Sean, that you were? Yeah. I was looking at a poster about the balloting for. Big five, the all-time team. They have the five schools represented. And under LaSalle, somebody seems to have written in an ink the name of Bill or Ra Ra Rafferty. 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 Must be, it's the only way I could get on. I wouldn't do anything like that. It's beneath me. In fact, it's beneath Randy Wood's name. It is your handwriting, however. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm still on the bottom of the list. <laughs> you did pick it You're up. The prime suspect, uh, given that it is your handwriting. The only guy at the table with a felt pen, and you spotted it. <laughs> I'd vote for you. Coach Cal. He's got it going here, doesn't he? They voted for him in the past. He has been the Atlantic 10 coach here the last two seasons. He was very competitive about people say anything about the program, about the players. And he's done a, a great job getting kids through UMass, getting them jobs after they're finished. I mean, the total package, which you, you conjure up so many names when you think of guys who have the total commitment. I know the guys have been there forever, the Deans and Michaels and mm -hmm. people of the world, of the coaching profession. And this is a young guy. Tonight at midnight, Eastern time, more college basketball action comes your way from the WAC as Hawaii travels to Provo to face Russell Larson, Kenneth Roberts, and the BYU Cougars. That's tonight, our midnight snack in the WAC, as we have called it. And, and every time I, BYU. I hear you say that, I think of Rick Majerus having <laughs> ribs someplace at midnight, a pizza at two. A healthy snack, at least a healthy that size snack. In terms of the substance of it, not particularly healthy. Matt Maloney, and you, now with eight points. And you have not seen, you being the people of the basketball world that love to watch ESPN, how good these guys are. It, it's, it's a shame because of the devastation up front. I mean, coming in, you knew the power game was an essential yep. part of the arsenal, and if it took over, Penn was in trouble. So now you're playing an entirely different game than you're used to if you're Penn. And you don't have the dominance in the backcourt because they don't have the talent maybe up front as you masked us. Well, very few teams have the combination inside of Camby and Rowe and Bright, and then they bring Dingle in that John Calipari has. And my friend Dunphy right against most teams, he can compete with the 6-7 in the front line, sure. but this is not an ordinary team. And you, you think of uh, Michigan and the great recruits they have, Taylor Ward amongst others, and, and this team beat them. Mm -hmm. It's just that Michigan can't get after you like this club does. So they, they will not feel badly after this loss. They'll be upset at it, but it will not deter their progress. I don't think at all. No, they're NCAA tournament bound, one would suspect, and uh, on their way to another Ivy League championship, barring disaster. Right. Knocks in the jumper, and UMass leads 68 and it's Norvell. It is, and... Uh, I just love his attacking the goal. Oh, he's not afraid of the tin, is he? Dan, they are deep. Dan Doherty. I was thinking of uh, Jerome myself there. The yeah. way he attacked the block was beautiful. Dan Doherty, high school coach of Eric Moore. And uh, 
talking to him at a wedding, just raving about his kids, Alan and Moore, and what they've done and how they've come along. And he's very fond of Fran Dunphy, as most of Philadelphia is. Lou Rowe up to 23 points. Eric Moore and Jerome Allen were teammates in high school at Episcopal Academy in Philadelphia. They played together for eight years now. This is Krug. He thought he was fouled by Rowe. The crowd chance air ball. 70-37 UMass. Under 10 minutes remaining now. Now, if you're if you're Fran, you're saying, guys, just keep playing. I know what you can do. They've taken us away away from things that we've controlled before. This is just a blitzkrieg. But keep performing. And he just has jumped the post defenders there. And they had assistance as well. Now John Calapari. Wright had the fist up like Dean Smith does when you're tired. He's picking up a thing or two from the maestro. At CarStar, we understand how important... Take on Georgetown in the Battle of Oklahoma. Ryan Miner and the Sooners face Big Country Bryant Reeves in Oklahoma State. Followed at midnight by the Big West matchup of the running Rebels of UNLV and Neil McCarthy's New Mexico State team, ranked number 24 this week. That's all on Big Monday this Monday, presented by Bud Light. And you hope that Tim Gergovich is feeling well. Uh, apparently out of the hospital. Has a work... Beyond the norm, huh? I mean, the guy gives everything. And uh, hopefully he'll get back and regulate. This is the story. Not a pretty story from the Penn perspective, particularly this half, in terms of shooting three out of 17. Allen and Maloney combined for 18 points. And UMass has control from the start. Norville powers in. First points for Enos Norville. North Carolina. Maybe get more involved a little bit if you can. Just to see. I can't get much more involved than I am. Are you talking about Eric Moore? Eric Moore. <laughs> <laughs> now you're always emotionally immersed in your duties. But the, you, you think, well, bring some subs in, but they're down to 10 that are contributors. It's not like subs that don't see the floor for John Calipari. Right. This is the key thing that determines who comes out is defense. If he doesn't see the effort on defense, okay, you come over here on the bench and we'll put somebody in who wants to play defense. One of the guys that gave me great insight to this program was Sean Ford, who used to be here, then went to Cincy, and, and now just received the job with USA Basketball. Hmm. So uh, maybe something. he can use his connections to get you on that all big five team. Well, now let's, uh, he may have some influence. His sphere of influence is now global versus upstate New York. But his, his idea of this team a few years ago was that they were going to turn the corner. Mm -hmm. And I think he, being Calipari, has just shocked the basketball world. And with that comes a little animosity, a little jealousy on occasion. And it's and amazing that John has his detractors. I would say people who uh, say those things have never met the man nor have watched the way he conducts this program. And he also has trouble scheduling. <laughs> Dingle. Nice help. They did get more from Moore. And a foul on the follow-up action. Foul Moxley into the game for the first time for Penn. See, now, as a player, and, and, and most people that watch the game have played at some level, when you're in a game like this and you're way behind as a performer, you don't feel good about yourself because you feel you've let your teammates down, you've let your school down, you've let your coaches down. And it's some, it borders not on embarrassment, but you question yourself a little bit. This won't happen with this basketball team because of what they've accomplished this year so mm -hmm. far, where they've been in the past, and the type of people they have in the program. This is just a terrific team they performed against that came ready. I mean, John tweaked them. You could tell today how he was talking to them. You guys, you're getting a few days off. Give me one more. Come on, reach back a little bit more. And obviously challenging the guards to go play these guys. They tell me it's a great backcourt. You go guard them. Keep them out of it. Don't let them score. 
Last foul was on Dingle. Moxley made one out of two. Donaldson Jr. from Irvington, New Jersey. With eight minutes left, UMass leads 74-41. He drives home with Bowman. Bowman has the car. He's the big money guy in this program, I told him. Can be. Acrobatic score. Adjusted his body and dropped it in. Moxley probably has to pay for the tolls, too. <laughs> Donald Moxley, best remembered by Penn fans for his big jumper in the first round game last year against Nebraska in the NCAA tournament that stopped the big run by the Huskers as Penn went on to beat Nebraska. All right, look at all the help. That's a shame because now normally you see one, maybe two. There's three. A big turnaround jumper by Moxley, too. But mm -hmm. more you can see how he understands the game. Terrific screener. Presents himself in an open fashion. And how about the uniform number? That's his number. Number 32. But at what home, is he wearing? He home? wears number five. Number five. Because it was the number worn by his father, Bruce, who played at Penn. And I asked him tonight, I said, uh, what is it with this number five? You know, it's great you honor your dad. I said, how come not on the road? He said, well... I need a little identity of my own. <laughs> so, so much for the paternal influence, but a real kind gesture. Oops, lane violation against Dingle, so Moore will get another. Eric's dad, Bruce Moore, now the head the coach at Strathaven High School in Pennsylvania. We talked with Jerome Allen, too, about his uniform number. Here's Jeff Meyer, crowd favorite. In for Enos Norville. You're going to get in trouble with this one. Go ahead. I know. Jerome I said, Allen. Mrs. Allen, forgive me, but Jerome provided this information. You know, he wears number 53, which is an odd number, especially for he's a guard. A, he's not a linebacker. That's right. But there's a story behind number 53 said it was the year my mother was born. Ooh, and I, I told you you shouldn't tell the story. Well, it's, it's in tribute to his mother. Tim. He's probably all kind of 10. Well, I don't think she was born in 1943, Bill. <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As Trice thought he got all basketball. And there's the daddy, Papa, Jeff Meyer. Senior from Wausau, Wisconsin. He and his wife, Joanna, gave uh, birth to son Jacob almost a year ago. He said he's huge. I believe it, Jeff. He's 17. wearing his shoes. So he told me the baby. His shoes? Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> There's Jerome and there's Allen. number 53. Very close to his mother, Janet. Says if he makes it in the NBA, the first thing he's going to do is buy his mother a house. Uh, he grew up well, in a very tough neighborhood in Philadelphia. Jerome, as a young boy, shared a bed with his sister. The house was so crowded with aunts and cousins and uncles. He wants to buy his mother a house. She will get that wish. Or he will... Take care play of the that NBA, favor. You, uh, yeah, I, sure. I, first time I looked at him, in your mind, you just could see the makings of, and as you get to speak to him and see the depth in him, I mean, it's the quality that coaches would like to have in their day-to-day -day or daily routines in the NBA because, I mean, you live together for virtually seven, eight months, and he's got the makings, obviously, in a offensive mode, but the quick feet, too, to guard the big guard on the other end. Trice followed up the Moxley miss. Four points for Sean Trice, who averages 7.4 per game. Jerome Allen was very heavily recruited by UMass. John Calabrese said they very much wanted him. He was offered scholarships by 14 scholarship schools. Penn, for those of you who do not know, does not give scholarships in accordance with Ivy League rules. They do give grant and aid to students who qualify based on need. But Jerome decided the Ivy League education was more important to him than the scholarship. And when you get the chance to go to the Wharton School, as Jerome has, mm -hmm. uh, that's an opportunity worth considering. Certainly, Canby makes the first. He will know what to do with his paychecks. Yes. And Fran Dunphy teaches a class in the Wharton School. He's not just the basketball coach, but he's also an assistant professor. What did you get here? Class, small ago? business dynamics. Well, it's almost a 40-point game. I think it's time to empty our bucket, don't you? Well, do you know that Fran Dumpy almost became an athletic director? He was going to give up coaching basketball. What a terrible loss it would have been to the game. The administrative end of things. Leave to others. Uh, he's in the right spot. Bowman missed the three. Can be the rebound. I saw Bob Levy last night. He was on the Penn Athletic Board. He was down at the Spectrum for a Sixers game. Mm -hmm. And he just said, what a terrific gentleman and wonderful coach that he is. Yes, he Could is. He's proud of his alma mater. Marcus Camby goes to the bench with six and a half minutes remaining. 
Well, Penn's had some terrific coaches. Guys have gone on to the NBA like Bob Weinar, Chuck mm -hmm. Daly, Dick Harder, we mentioned earlier, Jack McCloskey. A few. Ted Cottrell has checked in for UMass, ring number 40. Kellogg missed a three, and Moxley controls. Allen. Great with the ball. Look at that left hand. Yes! Yes! Bowman fouled, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. That ticker will not stop. Great job. Push the ball. Play as though it's even. That's what you're always saying to your players. I know the score. I can count. But show me what's inside the shirt. All left. Draw the D. The dish. And look at the, the smooch and contact by Ira Bowman. Ira with a good game off the bench for Coach Dunphy. He has nine points. Penn is not a good free throw shooting team, and that's something that, as we head toward NCAA tournament time, might hurt them against the quality of home in the tournament. They're only 63% from the line. You say that to, like you knock them down <laughs> with frequency. You know, that is not true. Meyer. And Cottrell got a hand on the rebound. UMass will inbound with 552 remaining. John Calipari in control, up by 35. And little question, his team will be number one again in the next poll. How about this crowd, though? Nobody leaving. Don't they have any festivities to go to? And they are hanging in. Or is it a long walk to the local? No, it's not a long walk, walk, although it is a fog shrouded, dense fog here in Amherst the last couple of days. They are enjoying this. Williams. is distraught. He is a real fan favorite. He jumped higher at being distraught over the miss than he did on the initial <laughs> release. <laughs> Jeff is one of those guys, I said this about Tom Grice, the Saturday edition of the Daily News. He might have trouble jumping over. Mm, that's not very thick. No, it's front page, back page, and obituary. Williams will shoot two. He is 12 points and now 13. We used to scrimmage pen when Chuck Daly was there. And uh, in those days, they played big. They had Calhoun and all the, the, the uh, little page, that crap. And they would, everybody figured, well, let's press them. And Chuck had guys, they would pass the ball without dribbling to break the pressure. And they were excellent with the basketball. There's another of their NCAA teams. Where, Chuck was there, learned how to dress at Duke, and then got some so suit deals in Philly. <laughs> Allen missed the three. Now Mike Williams he achieved a personal milestone Thursday night here against Rutgers. He went over 1,000 points for his career. 26 UMass player to do that. Meyer missed the left-handed shot and then was too frisky on the rebound action. Chuck, a little bit like you, your school of thought, uh, puts the money in seldom does it come out <laughs> not a bad move by the big fella huh yeah. a little lefty release and you know tournament time size because can't be so active you get a little foul situation he can help them with some minutes hey, Jeff Meyer, can... you think of games in the past particularly last year against North Carolina when John Calipari's team upset the number one team in the country at that time in the finals of the preseason NIT Meyer came in to play Eric Montross and mm -hmm. played him very well. He's given them quality minutes against some big men in some crucial situations during his career. He's a physical presence, and he gets a couple of ones, but Norville started to take some of those. I don't know what the fans are hollering, but John Calipari is very good at controlling the audience, making sure that they didn't like whatever it was they were chanting. We couldn't make it out, and he held up his hand as if to say, knock it off, and they did. Impressive night for both Rowan Camby against the undersized Penn front court. Uh, terrific shooting percentage. 507 remaining. UMass on its way to its 10th straight win. They'll go to 11 and 1 overall with this victory. And you throw in four blocks for Camby. Nice pump fake by and Nat Graham, seeing his first action of the night, has his first points. Number 33 is Nat Graham, the sophomore from Miami. To prove with a nice penetration. And three from the corner for Mike Williams. He has 17. Including three three-pointers. Meyer might have tipped that three-point try by Tim Prude. And Graham uh, contributing. This little rebound here. Four and a half minutes remaining. From the corner, a try for three. Short, an air ball from George Zaninovich. Williams. 
Cottrell and Meyer battled each other. Now Dingle fouled as he approached the bucket. And the hand for Mike Williams as he goes out. This is the non-conference schedule facing Penn this season. They open with a first game loss against Canisius, then wins against Ohio State, Michigan, and St. John's. And after this game, they have big five foes outside the conference. And off till Thursday, too, Sean, which gives them a chance to reconnoiter. Dingle missed the first. Is there anybody you've seen that uh, you would say is a definite in the Final Four? I mean, you, no. Well, nobody is, but yes. uh, But I think this team has as good a chance to win it all as anybody, UMass. It, it, it's who turns up the heat late, I think, as they get into their tournaments, start playing a little bit better. I, I think you've got drop-offs on occasion because of... Well, I just think, one you know, any criteria ready. that you would judge a tournament team by... UMass has it. They have uh, strength inside, perimeter shooting. They're deep. They block shots. They're an improved free throw shooting team. They have tournament experience. They're very well coached. They all wear the same suits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it. That coaching staff, other than Billy yeah, Baino. Bill Baino did not all... get the green suit memo tonight on the UMass coaching staff. Everybody has sort of the greenish tint what? suit on the coaching staff, they except got... for Bill Baino in the middle, who has a brown suit. They, they got a deal with Sunoco. The coach, you see the green suit? There's Bruiser. Yes. Right to left, uh, James Bruiser Flint, Mike Connors, Coach Calipari, then Bill Baino standing out of the brown suit, did not read the memo. No, absolutely. John Robick, Brian Gorman. I think uh, Billy had that brown suit at Seton Hall 14 years ago. <laughs> Padilla, the pull-up, and it bounces out. And out of bounds, off a pen player, it hit Jamie Lyron, who's just checked in. We'll return for the final three and a half after this. In a country where the people are as diverse as... not been a friendly place for the opponents. The opponents have never won here in the Mullen Center. The UMass record all time in this building will be 24 and 0 when this game is over. The only place it's nice is uh, the San Gennaro Feast Day in New York. They've got plenty of calzones if you can fight your way through the crowds, but he is a big item in this town. Shirts, stores, you name it, signing autographs. Yes, has Coach Cal's Closet, a uh, clothing store downtown Amherst. I had the closet. <laughs> Norville, the free throw shooter, missed the first. Of course, a lot of concern here in the Commonwealth that John Calipari will leave, but that comes up every year, and he has stayed, and he has a very nice financial package. And who would begrudge him that when you look at all that he's done for this university? This was a university that was on the verge of bankruptcy when he arrived here, and uh, they managed to build this beautiful new facility in part because of the tremendous fan response and getting on TV and all the revenue that was generated because of the team that he built. Jason Germain, a walk-on, comes in. Well, you know his wife Ellen is not going to bingo on Friday's having to make a hit. <laughs> The charge card isn't uh, at its end. Nunez. Nice help on the baseline. And Norville rattles it in. And the Minutemen are up to 88 points with three minutes remaining and a 38-point lead. Kappa Thonovich uh, in the ball game. Vigar playing for the first time tonight and a prospect that doesn't look bad in practice. You know, he, he will be a factor next year. And he's from that war-torn country, yes, Croatia. It was Yugoslavia. Yeah, and uh, his dad was ambassador, I believe, I yes. read. And, and they moved to Canada and, and did not return. But he, they listened to the news and follow up on it and the tragedy, a personal one. And 
his remarks at the Philadelphia paper one day he'd like to return as Donald showing some nicely <laughs> as he gets into the 10 Irvington high I was wondering with two and a half minutes left when you were going to work that in <laughs> Norville goes down to a knee but kept it alive for Nunez Jermaine he had a three earlier this year and the crowd erupted Nunez Oh, they, they, they're getting them up now, huh? Yes, it is garbage time. Yes, Coach, we've been sitting here listening to you all year long, and now it's our time. Now Myers coming in. Wonder if it's for Nunez after that last shot. Sid Graham. This, you know what's nice? This group in the floor now, they're trying to run their offense, get each other involved. That's the equal distribution that you see of a Penn team. And tonight, all taken away because of the intensity of the defense was beyond what I've seen them all year. Matt Graham is seven points off the bench tonight for Penn. He's the second all-time leading scorer. Coral Gables High School in Miami. Down to a minute and a half remaining. They're trying to set him up for the three. Oh. Jermaine. But rimmed it. It was Jermaine that he made that. We have time for one or two more. We've got a minute 17. Nice post pass. Big off. With effort. Just his second field goal of the season for the freshman. His family now lives in the P in Ontario, as Bill mentioned, his father Gorin is a diplomat. And with under a minute left, Padilla directs traffic. A big part of the UMass improvement this year has been the improvement of Padilla. Norville rattles one in. It lets them rest. They're in Kellogg, where they can play small with Williams and Kellogg and Padilla. And it's just an interesting inter uh, interchange. Graham missed the fall away and the rebound batted over to Padilla so UMass will get some time off before they are next in action when they are at Rhode Island on Thursday and Norville's foul on the way up tough to win here huh for an outsider yes indeed it is UMass still perfect in this building Sports Center next preview of the AFC and NFC title games coming up tomorrow highlights of the Jazz and the Knicks and highlights from top 25 college basketball that's coming up in 29 seconds Sports Center is next boy these folks here in Massachusetts are well educated oh they look at their TV guides and prepare for the evening and so much made about the academics of the basketball team, but John Calipari said people shouldn't ballyhoo the fact that our team had a 2.8 collectively last year. We've been averaging a 2.5 for four years now, which really goes back to how unfair the press coverage about the academics was last fall. And the shot of Blue to support you. He's going to graduate on time. Yep. I wanted to see the arms of Blue Row, though. I, I was not impressed. He was uh, showing you some gun today. And sticks. I mean, nothing. Not impressive at all for a guy spending that kind of time. Now, wait a minute. You're a guy who was once playing in a golf outing in a pair of shorts. There they are. Your pasty white legs. Blue has those guns. And, uh, and somebody drove up behind you in a golf cart and asked what the out-of-bounds markers were doing in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> With shorts on your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you did hear that story. Uh, yes, I did. I believe it was Rick Barnes who <laughs> told me that story. It was. Garrett Kreitz Garrett off the bench and in the scorebook. He's a freshman from Prescott, New Jersey. Final 10 seconds of an impressive Massachusetts win. And Mass will move on and so will Penn. And the Quakers will go get them. People in Philly, don't be concerned with this one. This was just a superior inside team that was geared up. Getting a little vacation, had been struggling the wrong time to come in. He used to wear the big T-shirt, by the way, to hide those pimples. He's, he's got some biceps. You call those guns, huh? He must have been from a wussy neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in my neighborhood. <laughs> Nunez got it to bounce in. Wouldn't it be something if these two got together again in the tournament? You never know. It could happen. And you will see emotionally on a more stable, patient pen team. Number one is still number one. An impressive showing tonight. 
for John Calipari in the minimum. Lou Rowe, 23 points and 10 rebounds. Marcus Camby, 17 points, 6 rebounds and 4 block shots. Michael Williams, 17 points and 3 assists. So the Minutemen have now won 10 in a row while Penn watches its 8-game winning streak come to an end. The final score, Massachusetts 93 and Penn 60 for Bill the Body Raftery. Sean McDonough saying, so long, Sports Center's next. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, brought to you by DirecTV. Introducing personalized TV. And by the totally new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. You a sports fan? Then you know what this is. All the games you're missing. How'd the Chiefs pull ahead? How'd Seattle blow out the Nuggets?